Okay, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and we got a situation we got to talk about. It's a situation that possibly happens to you, the viewer. Um, it's about paint and body. It's about doing your final paint job and, and fucking it up is basically what it's about. And I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to fix this situation after I explain what the situation is. Uh, you can see the car behind me. This is our 34 Ford convertible. We've been working on it for approximately... Uh, two and a half going on three years. We finally got it painted, but we ran into some situations And it's a situation that is a common situation that happens and usually gets you very very frustrated and pissed off and angry But I'm going to show you how to do an easy fix on it. No problems. It's called burning through the paint when you're buffing. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the body shop girl it's everything you need to know about cars and more. saying this is actually a pretty technical paint job we got the high lustrous um fucking very very deep red pearl on it and then of course we got the black uh mica metallic pearl on top so it is a very extensive paint job very expensive paint job especially that red that red is very very expensive being ppg paint that it is and what we were doing we were buffing the doors to mount the doors back onto the vehicle and what happened is when i was buffing the door um i was doing a nice lustrous job buffing it uh, actually what happened is I went ahead and color sanded the clear down. Now I applied three coats of paint, three coats of clear, and then I color sanded it with 1500. Then I went back with my DA sander with 3000. But what happened is when I got completely done buffing the whole door out, I noticed from the light uh, reflections up on the ceiling, there were still some minor scratches in this area that I didn't get out. So I went ahead and started buffing it again. Now I buffed it all down with the wool pad, and when I got to my foam pad situation, what happened is the foam pad burned through the paint. Now it actually burned through right here, okay? Uh, so I put a big line right there. Of course, it really pissed me off. I was furiously pissed off. I couldn't fucking believe it. I'm doing a paint job like this, and, and, and actually ruining the paint job like that can be a big, big nightmare. So I had to go ahead and block sand that out with 1500, and I had to blend it out until I couldn't feel any edges on it. Okay, so now what we got, we got an open space here that is unprotected with um, the paint. Because what happens is once you bust through the clear coat of your paint, and then you go back to put your paint on, what's going to happen is it's going to blister around those edges because the paint has reducer in it, and reducer will uh, activate, it'll react, I'm sorry, to the clear, and you'll have an edge around that. And the only way to fix that is you're going to have to spray epoxy primer on it. Now what we're using here to put our epoxy primer on, I'm using my SATA touch-up gun because we're going to we got to contain the area where we're going to spray. Let's go look at the epoxy primer and see what we're going to do with that. Is we're going to put some epoxy primer on the area that has busted through and what that will do, that will seal it up so we won't have any blistering or any type of uh, contamination going toward the clear where the clear has been uh, affected. Okay, so basically we see what we got to do to it to fix it properly and when we go in the paint booth You'll see how I'm gonna spray that on there because I'm gonna use my touch-up gun to do it with now when I say touch-up gun It's a small uh, Version of a full-size gun and when we go in there I, it, There's a there's a certain way that you want to put your epoxy primer on when you do this Because what happens if you put it on real wet it will blister around the edges We don't want that to happen. So we got to put it on dry I got a couple guys in the background that just happened to be restoring their cars using my friend Pete's videos to do that with. Let's get a talk with them, see what they're fucking working on, and how uh, my friend Pete's videos help you out, the DIY guy that wants to do it yourself. All right, guys, what's going on? We got uh, Mr. Roadrunner Dave guy over here. How you doing? How's your uh, Daytona doing, Dave? That's yeah, doing good. Now, what do you got? Is it 1970 Daytona? No, 69. So it's a 69 Daytona. 
and you're completely going through it, having it completely restored by this Nine one horse restoration. Yeah, you know, this one guy. That, that's all he does. That's all he does. All right. So basically, what you're saying is you're getting a pond course restoration. Now the guy restoring the car. That's all he does. He only does Mopars. That's it. There's nothing that else he does. Right. Right. As in, as in my friend Pete, he basically does. You do everything. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Good luck, dude. Thanks. You don't want to tell us how much money you already spent. Uh. I think I've got forty in it right now. Forty thousand dollars, and he's still doing metal work. It's not even in paint yet. It's just a body. Yeah. Wow. What's your speculation to build that car? How much? Uh, I'm thinking eighty, ninety by the time I'm done. And the car's gonna be worth? It should be worth about three hundred. Three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Nice. All right, shake your hand, make a friend. What's going on, buddy? I'll just come by to say hi. Watch my videos. You work right here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, for. Uh, the phone company, yes, you're, putting sir. In, you're putting in cables because the people that are doing the road work out here cut your cables several times. But uh, you're using my videos to actually restore a car at your house, am I right, Les? Yes, sir. 68 no. Camaro. 68 Camaro. What have you already done to that car? Well, first I stripped it uh -huh. all the way down. Okay. And then the next thing I did is took your advice and did a vinegar bath. Okay. And immediately after I did the vinegar bath, I did the alcohol bath. Cleaned it off real smooth, right. and I put it in epoxy primer to seal it up. So it's all that epoxy primer, you're sure to do all the body work. Now you've gutted it out, stripped it down. Everything. The videos you watched, I actually put up several years ago, yep. uh, that in, uh, it consisted of stripping it down to bare metal, and then once you strip it down to bare metal, if you got surface rust or mild rust, you can go ahead and take your vinegar water mix, that's a, about a 30-80 uh, mix, 30-20-80 mix, and then you mix that all together. Clean it off with some steel wool, possibly take a brush, let it sit on there for several, uh, 35, 40 minutes. Is that what you did? That's what I did. Uh, keep us updated, Les. Thank you very thank much. You. We appreciate it. And have a great day, buddy. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. I got to get right. in here and paint Me this. Too. All right. Go back to work, right, buddy. See you guys. Get my fucking internet working. <laughs> yeah. I'll work on it for you a little bit. You, you need to. All right. Okay, Dave. So what we got here is we got a situation where my friend Pete burned through the clear. And what we're doing, we're epoxy priming that, and you've never seen that done. You told me that you would do what? Well, I thought uh, I would just reshoot the paint, but um, I thought you were going to epoxy primer the whole door, and I think you just... Uh, no, I'm going to spot just, prime you just did only it the it section that we burned right? through. Yeah. Now, when you uh, saw that, you were asking, why are you doing that? Right. Because you said if that happened to you, you would just put the paint directly on it. Right. Now, the reason we're doing that, I've already explained, and I'm going to tell you is because the reducer that you use in the paint will actually react to the edges around the clear where we burn through because when you use clear, you don't use reducer in the clear. The clear that you use only has an activator hardener. You understand? So you're using two different chemicals and mixing them together, and what happens? They don't fucking mix together, dude. Once it's dry, what happens is the reducer will hit the edge of that burned area and then what happens, it starts blistering and peeling. I'm sure you've seen that before in oh, paint yeah. jobs. Yeah. That's what happens, see? And most people, they don't know how to do this, but my friend Pete's here to show them how. If you want to come in here and hold the camera while I am spraying the primer on there, because we don't really need our mask. This is going to be a real quick, easy situation. No overspray. I'm going to show them how to apply the epoxy primer on there, because you don't want to put full wet coats on it. You want to dust it on there and put it on dry, because even the epoxy primer, if you put it on there wet, it will blister around the edges, and we don't want that. Okay, we got Dave doing the camera, so if he doesn't do a good job, that's not my fault. Now, what I'm using here, I'm using my little touch-up SATA gun to do this with, because we are only going to epoxy fry in this area right here. And uh, what I did is I turned the air down real low, and then I took my pattern, and I made the pattern very small, and then I also closed the volume to where it's barely coming out. And you can see just by the area, look here, you can't even see it coming out. You see that, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Now, the day can come over here and going to spray again, I mean, the camera. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put a very dry coat on this. And the way that I achieve that, I turn my air up just a little bit so I have more air than I have paint. If you watch the paper right here, you'll see it come out. Do you see that? Do you see that right there? Yeah. Okay, what I did is I just put a dry coat of primer on there. All right, if you notice when I touch it, okay, see, just from the air on the spray gun, it's basically drying it. That's what you want to do. So we're going to go right here and then watch real close.
And notice how far I'm away from it. The farther you're away, the drier it's going to go on, and that's what we want. We want nice, dry coats. As I'm putting this on, from the air blowing on it back and forth, it's actually drying the primer as I apply it. close-up look at that you can see how it blended out really really nice it went on dry there's no blistering going on and it just looks really really slick so um, we'll be back after we paint it to get a good look at the door to see how you fix burn through on Buffy Once you go ahead and apply your paint and your clear coat, this is basically what it's going to look like right here. It's a situation that says you got to use epoxy primer when you have a situation where you burn through your clear with your buffer. Um, if I would have painted that without putting epoxy primer on it, what would have happened is it would have blistered, it would have peeled off, and it would have looked like shit and caused more problems than we fucking need today on this particular car that's getting ready to leave the shop any day soon. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you and telling you that if you take your time and you use the right materials and you take the right procedures and apply them the way that they're supposed to be, everything turns out great and it's a happy day after all. So do what you got to do to do it right, and do it right because if you ain't doing it right, you ain't doing it at all. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you and telling you that the right materials and the way to do it properly is the only way to fucking go. We'll see you later. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.